Today, I get to play with kitties and puppies. Applique ones anyway. Keep watching. Hi, it's Fran Morgan with Fabric Cafe. And today we have something so much fun. We're gonna be playing with kitties and puppies and we're gonna do it on an applique on a quilt. So let's jump right in and show you the quilt that we're gonna be featuring. This quilt is our perfect pets quilt and it has these darling kitty appliques here on this block here and then just a very simple fun block alternating with it. And I just love this and we've got some great fabric we're gonna be working with, so let me show you that. So here, now we have this great kitty pattern here and our number one fabric with the kit that we're going to be working with is this fun kind of a clover look in the flowers. And this here will be our focus fabric and that is gonna go in the block here, this big block alternating with the cat. Then our number two fabric is this fun, cheerful yellow. And there's something really special about this yellow. It glows in the dark. So for any recipient that gets this quilt, this is going to be lots of fun for them. I can see them now making tents and looking at their fabric in the dark. So this great yellow fabric is going to be the background. So it'll be like the starry night behind the kitties. And then our number three fabric is the stripe, which is what our applique kitty is gonna be made out of, as well as the sashing and the borders. So this is gonna be a really fun, bright quilt. And the kit number is 8022327. It is called Playful Petals. And it is, we are using the Perfect Pets pattern from the brand new Quilts for Kids book and it is also available as an individual pattern. Okay, now let's look at this applique block and start the step outs for getting this kitty made. So let's go back to the quilt here, and as you can see on this block here, we've uh, appliqued our kitty on top of this block. So this is very cute, so let me show you how we start doing this. The first thing we need to do is get our pattern. Now the Perfect Pets pattern, which is this kitty pattern, is available in our Quilts for Kids book that is brand new. And here you will see all of the instructions and things that you will need to make the pattern. And also the line art for the pattern. Now what's really cool about this pattern is that you can do either the kitty or the puppy. So you choose which one you do or mix them together. Do some puppies, do some kitties. That would be fun too. So this is gonna step through everything that you need there. Now just for the ease of the video today, I'm gonna actually use our pattern from the individual pattern just so that it's very simple. So let's jump in and get started. So we have chosen our kitty pattern to do here. And you can see that the outline is on the pattern. And then of course on the back side or the other side, we have the puppy outline. As I said, we're gonna choose the kitty. Now what's really great is this has already been reversed for you. So all you need is your tools and your pattern and you're all ready to go. We do not have to transfer this and reverse it. So to begin, we're gonna need a nice pencil and I like a pencil with a little bit of a dulled edge. And then I prefer to use a paperback fusible web for these types of projects. This product can be purchased at your local, at your local store, your craft store. And I prefer Heat and Bond, that's my favorite brand. It is a paper product and on the back side of the product, I'm not sure if you can see that here on the screen, but it actually has a rough side. This is the glue that's on there that's gonna actually attach our applique to the square. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna open it up just a little bit and we're gonna start tracing our kitty. Now I've got one here that's already traced on and started, and you can see how I've traced right here. Well, let me just kind of get this situated here. Now when we position it on here, as you can tell, you can see through the paper very easily, so it makes the tracing very, very simple. We do want to leave just a little bit of space between the appliques when we trace so that we have enough room to cut them apart there. So let's just shift this, got my pencil, and then I'm just gonna start tracing the lines just as you see that I'm doing here. Now I'm not gonna do this entire thing. 
I'm just going to kind of give you an idea of how this works. And once again, leaving a little bit of space between your appliques is great. Now we don't need to do the whiskers at this point. We'll show you that in a little bit further down the road, just the basic kitty outline. So I'm going to pull this away and I have one here. So what we've done here is it's been traced onto the paper and I have cut it out, but I've left a little bit of the fusible around the applique. Now this will make it much easier whenever we put this on the fabric and begin cutting it. So just leave a little margin all the way around that trace line as you see here and that'll help you out a lot. Okay, I've got all my tools set up and we are ready to start fusing the kitty to the fabric. So I have here my traced kitty on my fusible and I have the strip of fabric. Now let me just point out really quick the Kitty Perfect Pets pattern uses three one yard cuts of fabric and there is plenty of fabric in that in those three yards that you'll be able to get your kitty so we have allowed for that and we have a 10 inch wide strip for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our fabric on the wrong side here. Okay, because we want to fuse this kitty to the wrong side of the fabric. Now I have kind of a pseudo stripe going on here. It's not a perfectly straight stripe, but it is a stripe. So I want to do my best to kind of get it as even as possible so that the stripes aren't going sideways or diagonal. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is take my kitty and just kind of match the drawn lines a little bit. So I can see through this just a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to do a little crease and then I'm going to position this the best that I can straight up and down so that it's, it's um, nice and even. Because what we don't want to do is fuse it like this and then all of our kitties would be going every which way and that's not going to be fun. So just nice and neat here. This center crease is going to give you a little bit of a guideline to make sure that we're good. Now notice here that we have left extra space around as we mentioned earlier. We've got it on the wrong side of the fabric. The rough side of the fusible is down. This is the paper side. Now we're going to grab our iron. Now our iron is set for no steam. We don't want any steam on our iron, but it is on the cotton setting. I'm just going to place my iron down and I'm not going to go back and forth. I'm going to pick it up and just kind of hold it there for a moment so that it uh, covers the entire applique. And it just takes a few seconds. It's not a whole lot of time. And let's move this to the side and then I'm going to let it cool because it will be a little warm there. So and you can see that, okay, it looks like it's nice and fused down. Now when we do this, we're going to do all six of our kitties at the same time. So we have this 10 inch strip. Got that done for you. So let me show you. So here is the strip that I did where I have all six kitties on the 10 inch strip of fabric that is allotted for this. So you can see we've kind of alternated them, put them on nice and straight, and now it's time to cut them apart and start cutting them out. So I'm gonna take this one on this end. The first thing I'm gonna do, grab my scissors, and I'm just gonna roughly cut them apart. So just between here like this, and if it were me, I would cut all of these apart at once and just have them stepped, um, stacked up to the side for me to do later. This is a great thing to put on a movie or a show and just sit and cut on the couch. Then after we have them cut apart, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to cut actually on the drawn line. Now, as you can see here, just roughly following that line, very, very simple. You know, one of the things I liked best about applique whenever I started quilting was that it was kind of fun. And my kids were little whenever I was doing this, and they actually were able to help me with some of these steps. And they got very excited about it because it kind of acts like stickers. So you just continue to cut around here. And I've got one already done, so let's look at that because I know you can do that part. So here we have one done. Here's the right side. And here's the wrong side all cut out. Now, as you can see, the paper is still on there and you do want to leave it on to cut them out because it's going to help with the stabilization whenever you're cutting them out. So now the trick is getting the paper off. Now, 
learned a little trick with this, so let me show you that. Find a corner, and I think this little part right here is a great corner to use. And what I do is I take my fingers, and I fold this over like this. And then I take this and I roll it in between my fingers. Sometimes I have to do it a couple of times, but whenever I do that, that usually separates it. And you can see that paper comes right off. Now, if you'll notice, the paper is pulling off and there's gonna be a little bit of a shine to the back side of your fabric here. All right. That shine is the adhesive that we've put on there with the paperback fusible web. So at this point, we're all ready to go to put it on our block. So let's grab our block here. I'm gonna move this off to the side. Here's our block. And we're going to want to place this on the block according to the pattern. Now our pattern says to put it a half an inch from the bottom edge and we're gonna center it side to side. So I'm gonna grab a ruler, and this is how I do these whenever it's a specific amount from the bottom edge. I actually find the half inch mark on my ruler, and I put it on the bottom edge, just like so, so that it gives me a guide. Then I'm gonna just kinda of scooch this little guy down here, get him all nice and straight, so that the bottom edge is on. Now it looks like I need to move him over just a smidge, and pretty close to same size on each, same amount of fabric on each side on the block. We've got a half inch from the bottom. I'm gonna grab my iron again. Once again, remember no steam. And I'm just going to press it at the top. Now, this won't get in the way of the ruler, so I know that I'm good to go. And then I'm just gonna go around, move my ruler out of the way, and do that same pressing motion very carefully. then let it sit for just a moment and as it cools then it should be adhered to the block very nicely. Okay so now we have our block fused with our kitty on the block. It is time for us to transfer the whisker lines so that we can get those on. So I've moved my light box in here and I'm going to actually grab my pattern and place it on the light box. Then I'm going to place my block on top of the pattern. Because the kitty is fused onto our number two fabric, which most of you know is the lightest fabric in your grouping, you should be able to see through the fabric and line up the edge of the applique kitty with the lines on the pattern. So I'm doing that here and just kind of shift it till it gets just so, so that you can see that. And then I am going to take a water soluble fabric marker and I'm just going to trace these lines. So hopefully you can see this on your can on the screen. I'm just going to carefully place these in here like this. And then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. It makes it really nice having a light box. Now, if you don't have a light box in your sewing studio, something I've also done is just used a nice sunny window. Did that for years. It works super, super well. So that's an option too. Okay, now we have our kitty block all fused down and we have our whiskers drawn on. Now, don't forget, you're more than welcome to do the puppy too. It's included in the pattern, no whiskers for the puppy. But we're all ready to go here and let's talk about stitches and thread. So whenever I choose my thread, and this one's a little tricky because we have a multicolored fabric, but usually what I like is to actually take my thread, roll it out, and lay it down on the fabric to see it. You can see that these threads are going to show differently on this stripe. Now choosing, and it's all personal preference, some people really like their applique stitches to pop off and really show up on the quilt. It's a very charming look and I like that as well. Or you may want your threads to blend in just a little bit more. So any of these threads I think would be beautiful on this. Um, on our kitty that we'll be stitching in just a moment, I've chose something a little bit darker that gives it that kind of down home fun charm that I really like. And it also will allow you to see those stitches really well. Then the next thing is I really do prefer using a cotton thread or a poly-wrapped cotton to do this. Um, 
rayons are a little weak. I think they're not quite strong enough and I want my quilts to be loved on a whole lot. So I try to use a very strong thread. So I usually use just a Mettler poly wrapped cotton for this and it works beautifully. And also remember, you really do want your bobbin to match the top thread. So make sure you have plenty of thread to put in your bobbin as well. Okay, now let's talk stitches. Let's move this to the side and talk stitches. So whenever I applique, I usually love to choose what I call a blanket stitch. I know there's lots of different names for this, but I really prefer the blanket stitch. And that would be this choice here. Now, this stitch is very interesting, and let me just talk a moment about that. I'm gonna work with my needle in the down position, meaning it's always gonna land in the fabric when you stop. It's going to take one bite in and one bite out, which is this little line here, and then it's gonna move forward one stitch. Then it's gonna take the next bite in and out, just like this, move forward one stitch. So this is my preferred stitch. And I would play on your machine and find out exactly which one does that on your particular machine. There's some other stitches here that are on my machine and wanna, I wanna talk about why those don't work as well for me. This particular stitch makes a really pretty heavy um, stitch here that looks very similar to this. However, this stitch doubles up here and here. So it'll take the bite, it'll go forward, then backwards and then forward again. For me, this makes it a little tricky whenever I start pivoting around my curves and my corners because it's going back and forth so many times. And it is a little bit heavy for me. Now these two stitches, both of these are utility stitches. These look very similar on my computer, on my sewing machine. So I have to be careful not to choose these. The reason I don't prefer these as you can see how the bite is on these stitches, is it kind of creates a little bit of a V. And I don't prefer this, and it also makes the pivoting around your curves a little bit more challenging. So I prefer the straight bite, like this first stitch here, with the one stitch forward, it bites in, one stitch forward. Makes it much easier for pivoting and things like that. Now also, very important, when you're doing your raw edge applique, be sure to use an open toe foot if you can. And I'm just gonna kind of place this on this stitch line here. As you can see, it's very nice and open so that when you're stitching, you know where you're going and you know exactly where your needle has landed so you can pivot your work accordingly. Um, would never applique without one. If you don't have one and you're interested in trying raw edge applique, I highly recommend investing in one. So this one is great and let's start stitching. Okay, so now we're at the machine and we're gonna start actually putting some stitches on our block and get our kitty applique. So I've got my block here ready to go. The first thing I wanna do is select my stitch. So I go into my little folder here and go down until I find the appropriate stitch. Got that, okay. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our bobbin thread to the top so that you've got your top thread thread and your underneath bobbin thread pulled to the top. And we wanna get a really long tail on this so that we can kind of hang on to it. And this is what we're gonna tie off with. It's gonna come in really handy later, you'll thank me. Then we're gonna place our applique into the machine. Now, a couple of things is I'm gonna start right here on this little point, this internal point where the neck is. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because whenever I come back around and end, this is gonna be a really nice clean spot to end. So that's really important to me. If I were to end on a curve and try to meet those stitches, it gets a little tricky to make it look nice and neat. So I always do it like on a corner somewhere. Okay, now I've got my open toe foot here, got my threads pulled. Now I'm going to lower my foot. And I do have my knee lift on my machine so that I can work hands-free and adjust in position. I have my needle in the down position. And what that means is every time I stop, my needle is gonna land in the fabric. So I'm just gonna start, tap my foot, and we're down. 
Make sure I hold on to these and I'm gonna pull them out of the way. Now, I'm not sure at this point whether I'm going forward or taking a bite. So let's just take one stitch. There's a bite. So, good. Now I'm going to lift the foot just a little bit with my knee and adjust if I need to. And then I'm gonna take the stitch forward. Now, as you notice, my stitch forward is right on the outside edge of the cut fabric of the kitty. We're not stitching on the kitty fabric. We're stitching right on the edge. My needle's in the down position. I'm gonna take another bite and then I'm gonna move forward. Now, what's really great about this, having a knee lift or an auto foot raise, is that it allows you to work and lift that foot in position. So if you have that, be sure and use it. It's pretty handy. Now I'm gonna take another bite. If you'll notice, I do not adjust the block whenever I'm in the bite. I only adjust it when I'm on the outside edge. And the reason for that is, if I were to adjust here, whenever my needle is taking the bite into the kitty fabric, if I were to take it and move it now, it would create that V stitch on the inside of the applique, and that's not what we want. So you just move forward and then adjust here as you need to around those curves. Take the bite, not adjusting, move forward. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna continue around here doing this, adjusting as needed. And then we're gonna come back. Let's see, I'm gonna do just a little bit more. And you can see how that open toe foot really helps so that you can see where you're going and where your needle is being placed. And that's something too. It's really helpful to have that awareness of where your needle is gonna land. And if you'll notice on most sewing feet, there's little notches here on either side and that tells you exactly where it's gonna be placed whenever it goes down. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of the machine and show you what you need to do when you stop. Now, of course, you're gonna sew all the way around the edges and come back to where we began when you're doing yours. But for just for purposes of time here, I'm gonna go ahead and raise my foot. I'm gonna tap my uh, gas pedal down there so my needle raises, and then I'm gonna pull it long. And you can see I'm leaving the long thread, which is very important, and go ahead and cut that. And I'm gonna pull them long again so that whenever I start my next kitty block, they'll be all ready to go. Okay, I'm so excited. We're getting so much done here. Now we have our applique stitches, our nice little blanket stitch here right on the edge of the kitty applique. We have those nice little pretty bites that are all nice straight lines and it's looking perfect. Now it's time that we do the satin stitches for the whiskers and let me give you some tips on that. Now you know we've drawn those on um, first before we started any applique. Oh, and let me mention too, um, I did leave these threads extra long for now. Normally I would tie these off before I start the satin stitch, but I'm gonna show you those all at once once we get the satin stitch finished. So, okay, let's talk about the satin stitch. Now, I prefer to use a tearaway stabilizer behind my satin stitch. And one of the things that I do whenever I choose my stabilizer is I actually get it and I tear a little corner just to make sure it's easy to tear away. I do prefer a tear away as opposed to a cutaway so that that's not left in your quilt. So I do like that. It tears away very easily. And I usually use, oops, a little caught up there. Um, I'll usually use a double piece of it. Now this is pretty rigid, very easy to tear, like I said. So I'm gonna put this behind the kitty whiskers. Now I'm gonna make sure that it completely covers this entire area so I can feel it with my finger. It goes from here to here, uh, here and here. So we've got plenty of room. This is gonna stabilize the fabric. I'm gonna take some of my flathead pins and just pin this down so that it doesn't shift once I start sewing. And I like to put just several in and make sure that you get it all the way through both the layers of that stabilizer. Now let me talk about why we will want to stabilize this. Um, first, we did not stabilize our blanket stitch for the applique 
because this is a double layer of fabric and that fusible that's in there actually gives the fabric some rigidity so it doesn't need to be stabilized in the same way. On our whiskers, we're stitching right through one layer of fabric. And when you do a satin stitch, it actually is creating a line. The stitches go back and forth, back and forth. So what you're gonna do is the stitch is gonna go here, 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 here on each side of that line. If we did not have the stabilizer back there, what would happen is that stitch would kind of cup up the fabric and leave a little rigid spot, and we don't want that. We want our satin stitches to be nice and flat, and the stabilizer behind this takes care of that. So let's get this in our machine and do some satin stitching. Let us select our stitch. Now what I have done is select the zigzag stitch, and I've adjusted the measurements. I am going to take the length of the stitch down to 0.1. That basically means that it is almost not moving, so it makes a nice solid stitch. On the width, I took mine down to two. So I have a two width and a 0.1 length. Okay, now we can start sewing our whiskers. Now, same as before, we're gonna have both of our threads on top and pulled long. I'm gonna start at the top whisker and work down to the bottom. I do this so that I can keep these long threads, these tails out of the way. So I'm gonna place it, and once again, I'm gonna line it up. Here's my little arrows on my foot. I'm gonna tap so I can start and I'm following this marked line that we did earlier with our water-soluble fabric marker. So I'm just gonna go back and forth here, and we're stitching right on top of that line. And you can see that's making a nice, smooth satin stitch. We're gonna get all the way to the end here, and done. Tap my foot pedal to bring the needle up. Once again, pull my threads long so that it's easier to tie off. Now something to remember with these threads as well is you don't wanna run over them when you're sewing. So that are, when they're long like this, it's very simple and easier for you to move them out of the way as you're stitching. So that's very helpful too. And as you can see, we have a perfect first whisker. Okay, we've got all of our beautiful applique done here on our kitty. Now it's time to start um, dealing with all of these threads. I know it gets a little hairy, but there's real good reasons why we do what we do. Now first, let's pull off our stabilizer. So I'm going to unpin this like this and just set these pins aside back in my pin cushion here. And then I'm gonna flip this over and we're gonna pull off our stabilizer. Now we have all these threads, just manage them the best you can. Trust me, you want them long. And I'm just gonna start tearing. Now I am tearing through both parts at once and I usually like to tear against the stitch. To me, whenever you pull against the stitch, it has a nice clean tear right along the stitch line. So I really do prefer that. So. Let's just continue to pull this off and I will do this side. And you can see how beautifully that pulls off and it leaves a nice clean back to your applique block. Okay, so I'll leave that for later. Um, let's go ahead and talk about these stitches. Now, when you're sewing your applique stitch, there's always a bobbin thread and a top thread. The top threads stay on the top and the bottom threads, your bobbin thread, is on the bottom. So let's start with our blanket stitches here. I have a tapestry needle that has a nice size eye on it because you know it helps me to be able to thread it a little better. Um, I'm gonna grab one of the bobbin threads and I'm just gonna give it a slight tug. And whenever I do that, it raises the bottom of the stitch. And just go ahead and move closer to your screen so you can see up real close, okay? You can see how I'm pulling that. What that's doing is pulling that top thread through to the back. So now I have my bobbin thread and my top thread on the back side of the block. Now here's where we finished. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull it 
and you can see it's lifting up that loop right there just a little bit. I'm going to grab it with the end of my needle and I'm going to pull. Now all four threads, my bobbin and my top on my end, my bottom and my top on the beginning. Now I'm going to turn this over so that you can see that those threads have come through. So here they were here. Now they're both on the back. If for any reason these threads do not easily pull through, I would have to get a needle and thread the thread and stick it through to the back. But with the blanket stitch, it doesn't happen that often. So now I'm going to take these four threads, just going to tie a couple of overhand knots to do a knot. Nice. And then I'm going to take all four threads and thread my tapestry needle, which it's really nice that that eye is nice and big on that needle. And then I'm going to put this needle through some of the stitches, just like this. Okay, now trying to make sure you can see what I'm doing. I've just threaded under those stitches and then I'm going to pull this through and then I will clip. Now, the reason why we want to pull them under the stitches is if you left these loose and you just knotted them, a couple of things can happen. One, they could actually come undone before it's quilted. Once it's quilted, you don't really have to worry about it too much, but you want to make sure that these are anchored really well. The second thing is, if you have long loose ends and you have a light number two fabric like we have here, these dark threads could show through to the front and you don't want that. You want it to be nice and neat on the front. So that's kind of the reason why we do that. All right, now let's talk about our whisker threads here. It's basically the exact same process. So I'm gonna take one. Now in this case, I am gonna use a little bit smaller needle I'm going to use the eye end. I'm going to kind of give it a tug and then pull this through just like that. Now I have both the top and the bottom thread. Are you starting to understand why we left these so long? I'm going to do a couple of overhand knots just like so. Then I'm going to take both of these. And guys, this is my little trick. I fold those ends over the end of my needle here and just kind of give it a crease and then I can shove those two ends through the eye. Push those through, perfect. Then I'm going to take my needle and just kind of put these through a few of those stitches just like this. I'm trying to do this so you can see what I'm doing here and then I'm going to pull them through. Give it a nice firm tug, all nice and flat, then I can trim the ends. So you will continue this process till all of your threads are tied off and it looks like a beautiful piece of applique. So now we have our finished block and you can see it is so darling and cute. All of our threads are tied in nicely, even on the back, so that none of those dark threads will show through the fabric. And as you can see here, this would just place right here in this place on the quilt. And I think this is going to be a darling quilt. And don't forget that kit and this darling glow in the dark. Now also, don't forget that the pattern also gives you instructions to put a puppy in the place of the kitty if you would prefer to do that. So very cute. And we have a special kit for all those puppy lovers out here. Let me show you that. So let's just move off our block and we have some cute, cute fabric. This is so sweet. We've got all the little puppies in the dog houses here and everything you need to know, cuddle time, the dog house, a fur family. I love that, that's so cute. So this is our focus fabric and that is gonna go in the alternate block from where you would put your puppy block here. And then our number two fabric, so cute, lots of bones here, will be the background of where your puppy is and on the border. And then our number three fabric is this great stripe that blends in all of these beautiful colors. And of course, it'll be the sashing and the borders here as well as your puppy. So very, very cute. And you can see how quickly all of this goes together. 
the kit information on this. This kit is called Positivity and it's 8022328 and it is our Perfect Pets pattern from our brand new book, Three Yard Quilts for Kids and it's also available as an individual. Well, I don't know about you, but I had a fantastic time today being able to show you how to raw edge applique. What a hoot. Don't forget, we have lots of tutorials on our channel just like this, so go check them out. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Ring that bell so you can get notification. Thank you so much for joining us. It's Fran Morgan with Fabricat.